Okay, we got something new in the shop today. Uh, I picked this up on eBay as non, a non-working unit. Um, I haven't even taken a look at it yet. I just pulled it out of the box. Uh, this is a uh, old Motorola service monitor. Um, I believe this is the uh, 2200B uh, version. I'll, I'll, I'll know for sure when I open it up. Um, you know, nothing on it looks really too bad. I mean, it's you know, it shows its age. A little bit of the paint scratched off. Uh, a couple little dings and here and there. Um, but I don't see anything major on the outside. Uh, so you know, generally these uh, that I've seen that are not repairable, you know, have some big major case damage. But we'll take a look here. Uh, see what we have. This looks like it's going to be salvageable. <laughs> So here's what we've got. Um, you know, just from first look, it, it's it's got all the knobs. Um, typically, these will actually have a uh, microphone. Um, looks like there's a spare fuse in here. I actually have the microphone that goes with this. I just don't have the uh, this type of connector on it right now. But if we get this unit repaired, uh, this will probably be a multi-part uh, video in restoring this. Um, if that ends up being the case. I'll need to get it apart and make sure that it actually has all the pieces to actually uh, get it back up and running again. Um, okay, one of the first things that we're going to check before we do any, you know, apply any power is to check the rear fuses and see if there's actually a, uh, a fuse that has blown or is blowing uh, causing problems. Okay, the center one is going to be the uh, low voltage supply. Okay, it looks like the fuse is actually popped just below the uh, where you can see the glass. Um, I'm just going to check the other fuses. Okay, so we know we need to take a look at the power supplies first. Um, on this particular unit, the uh, low voltage supply is more than likely uh, as an issue. It may be something upward, uh, upstream from this. Um, but we'll take a look and see if we can figure out what it is. One thing I'll note on these, one thing I've noticed on at least these Motorola supplies, um, they have little washers on the screws and you need to be real careful uh, not to lose those. Um, if you do lose them, a lot of times if you end up with just a screw, be sure that you put a little bit of blue lock tight on uh, otherwise they'll work loose on you. I'm actually hoping when I get this part that Everything's pretty much intact. Um, I'm actually kind of hoping that it's just a really simple, uh, you know, power supply problem that we can get rectified and get it working. If that's the case, I'm I'm probably going to go pretty far on this to actually restore this to as original as I can get it conditioned. One of the things I noticed, a little bit of sheet metal damage here. 
Um, it's actually missing one of the little bumpers. One thing that concerns me, several of the screws are actually loose already. Um, it's more likely somebody at least opened up the case on this. These are not locked. Okay, just from an initial look, um, it appears everything is actually here. Um, I, all the cards are intact. Um, it's actually relatively clean on the inside. Uh, there's more dust obviously up here. Um, but in the main section, it looks relatively clean. It even still has the, uh, the original batteries, or the original style batteries at least. Okay, um, this is actually the high voltage section uh, of the unit. I don't suspect initially that, that, that that's going to be the problem. Okay, here's where we're at now. Uh, I've been playing with this for the last little bit. The, the fastest way to kind of diagnose what's going on, um, I basically went to battery, disconnected the batteries, and, and basically hooked it up to a DC power supply with uh, current control. Uh, to see what actually happens when you turn it in. It's got, actually got off, standby, and run mode. Um, I did have to replace the fuse. And right now we're pulling about uh, 0.8 amps just in standby mode. Um, when I do go to the on mode, a relay clicks on and Either the power spot drops out or um, it's just simply not pulling any power. Um, but there's more than likely I need, really need to take a look at the actual power supplies themselves, um, which is going to require a lot more disassembly. Um, so I'm going to get started on that uh, and see what we can find out. I'm sure I probably, it's unlikely I'll have the parts uh, to actually repair this today. Um, so I'll be having to do uh, some ordering process and things like that, and I'll try to go over that in, uh, in, in the videos to kind of give you an idea of what you, what's required to actually find uh, replacement parts for one of these, uh, especially if they're not available from the manufacturer. Uh, sometimes you have to actually re-engineer some things uh, to get it to work. Okay, I've got some, uh, some of the simpler stuff off. I've got all the covers off there on the top and the bottom of the unit. Right now, I just kind of wanted to go over. I'm, I'm going to remove the batteries. Uh, all the power supply sections that I'm wanting to look at first are, are here in this rear panel. I want to go ahead and get the batteries out. I doubt they work anyway. Um, but you want to be real careful. Um, the best way that I've actually found to remove these is to ideally use something plastic if you can. I use the screwdriver. Um, but basically, you just kind of want to work the batteries back and forth and just slowly start sliding them out. 
it just takes a little bit of patience. I, I've, I've worked about 15 minutes and I've got this one out about an inch. Um, so you just take your time and be real careful uh, to get the batteries out. Once you get them started, they generally come out pretty easy. Um, these are standard batteries. Um, you know, I can pick these up you know, on Amazon uh, really easily. Uh, or replace these if I want. I probably won't in this particular unit because these add a lot of weight to the unit. Uh, but this gives you kind of an idea. There's actually two of these uh, in the unit. Um, I just wanted to real quickly go over also uh, the actual model number. This is an R2210B uh, HS. I'm pretty sure the HS is the high stability version. Okay, there's both batteries out. Just for the safety thing, uh, I just wanted to remind everybody, and it says it plainly, there's a high voltage section that's up here in this area. You're going to want to make sure if you plug this in, uh, even if it doesn't turn on, that you check that high voltage uh, area and make sure that you discharge everything before you start working on it. Uh, otherwise, you could get a nasty surprise. Okay, here's some close-ups of, of where I'm at right now. Um, basically, I've removed the batteries. Uh, these two batteries were in the unit. And this is a uh, the tray that the batteries sit in. And that actually covers up this part. This is the, uh, the power supply for the unit right here. Uh, as you can see, it's got a very large heat sink. Uh, the inputs are here uh, on the back of the case. Um, so what we're, what we're going to want to do is we're actually going to want to remove this section um, and take a look at this module and see if we can figure out what's going on with it and it isolated. Okay, just to give you a real quick idea how to actually remove this power supply. Um, the power supply is right here. Um, if you look on the back, there's actually this big heat sink. And there's actually a couple more screws in here, but the only four that you need to worry about are the four that are in the outside corner. Um, once you remove those, actually just kind of wiggle and give a little tug and it'll come loose but don't pull too hard um, I'm just going to slide this out so you can see it okay you see that connector um, that connector you need to remove um, that's actually connected up to this section here um, and that'll actually let the power supply come all the way out um, and we can take a look at I'm already suspicious of the caps. I see some discoloration. Um, or maybe it's just a lighting effect. But um, this is more than likely our first problem that we'll have to solve. Okay, I've got the power supply removed. We got this disconnected. The easiest way to do it is actually to work your hands in and get these clips disconnected. And come in with a flat blade screwdriver right in the crease. Just don't put a lot of pressure. Just kind of easily start wiggling in and out and have some outward pressure with a flat blade screwdriver um, I have not tested these yet but as you can see these caps um, don't look good um, I see a little bit where they've actually leaked out uh, up in this area and they're kind of uh, you know got fat tops uh, kind of squeezed out um, more than likely these will need to be replaced and you know these th this failure could have caused more damage on the power supply um, I've actually got the uh, the service manual and we'll go over the schematic and the testing of the power supply as well um, and see if we can uh, get this replaced I don't have any caps uh, this size um, so there'll be a part two on this um, you know just keep your eye out I'll try to shoot this as quickly as I can um, generally I put out a video every week or two um, but as soon as I can get caps in and, and, and get the you know get the parts that I know that are bad replaced okay we've found one of the culprits uh, this particular relay it's a 12 volt I believe it's either 3 or 5 amp um, I was only able to find one source so far I think RF parts has these um, in stock um, if I need to, I'll actually create a little PCB and replace this. But this particular one, there's two of them in this board. And I noticed some, some uh, you know, solder flux that wasn't on any of the other connections on both of these relays. 
And if you look real close, you can see a couple of pry marks. And you can actually see where they've actually split the break in the plastic. Someone's probably tried to clean this relay or had some trouble with it or what have you. Um, but I'll need to get this fixed uh, for sure. The, uh, there is one other relay that's up here that I'll be removing. Um, it's actually drawing uh, a lot more current than this one, and it's not actuating. Uh, I let it go to about 3 amps, um, which more than likely that's probably what's causing the uh, fuse to blow, I hope. Um, but uh, I'm going to pull this one out as well and see if I can find some replacements. And just continue testing the rest of the supply and see if we can get it good. Um, it's actually really easy to power. There's a center pin which is ground and uh, You basically just look on the connector here where the reds at that actually goes right up to where the battery connectors at um, So it's fairly easy to test